Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab, and we got a box from Everlast uh, here with us today. I'm pretty excited about this. We're going to be doing a quick, you know, review on this guy, and we're going to raffle this thing off for a very good cause. This is a charity that uh, helps uh, parents with children that are terminally ill. Uh, so that's a good cause, and, and I'd like to help those guys out. But here's what here's what brought me to this purchase right here. Besides raising money for a good cause. Um, and making YouTube videos was people ask me all the time, uh, they say, Mike, what's a good uh, TIG welder, right? Hey, Mike, what's a good TIG welder? Um, and they'll, uh, which I always say, well, what's it for? Because <laughs> that's, that's important, right? If you're uh, gonna be you know, fabricating with half inch aluminum, all day long, every day, and your paycheck depends on it. That's that's a different machine than if you're making you know uh, exhaust parts in your garage in your spare time for fun. So uh, and that's usually what it is. It's just somebody who wants a starter entry level TIG welding machine. And uh, there's not a lot. Well, there there are a lot out there. Uh, but generally, I'll say it's the AHP or the Alpha TIG, uh, which is the yellow machine. And then Everlast is my two choices. This is the PowerTig uh, 200 DV, um, which I got right here. I'll show you. And as you can see, it's 1,200 bucks. You know, and eBay charges taxes now, thanks uh, to our government passing the law. It says that everybody has to pay set, uh, st state sales tax now, so that's a lot of fun. But it was at 13. Ish, 14 ish uh, after taxes. You can figure out whatever the state taxes are where you're at and figure that part of it out. But uh, people will want to know, like, what's the good entry level machine? So it's always this one or the yellow one. I've tried the yellow one and it's a, it's a pretty good machine. Now, uh, I have friends with Everlast and, and they've always liked them. I've never had a chance to try one uh, of my own. I've, I've worked with them and good machines. Uh, that I've worked with, but I wanted to get one for my myself, the one that I recommend to people, uh, and give it a, a test run, see how it works, and uh, it's a good price point. What I always say about the machines is, to me, what's really important is uh, the the warranty, who and how they stand behind the products, um, and and I usually find, which makes sense, the the lower you go in the budget, the worse that experience is uh, for the end user, and. Uh, and the feedback that I get from people who just chat with me on Facebook or uh, through YouTube backs that up. Uh, and then my own friends' experiences that, that I personally know, uh, like I have had a friend. So generally with the AHP, I, I, I get that it's a real pain in the ass to get anything fixed if anything goes sideways. And the problem is, is when you're a new TIG welder, uh, things tend to go sideways and usually it's your fault. Um, and people have a hard time owning up to that and, and taking that responsibility. So uh, you're, you're more likely to cause problems when you don't know a lot about subjects. So anyway, uh, I like this guy and, and I've had friends that have worked with Everlast for warranty work and uh, it, it was a pain. You know, they had to kind of uh, go them into getting it fixed, but they got the parts sent to them and, and the issue worked out. And, uh, and, and I, I would expect that that's what you'd want to see. Uh, they don't make enough money. There's not enough margin in these products where they can just let people break them and then send them stuff for free. Uh, that's, that's not a business model that's sustainable. Um, but, uh, you know, if you work with them, and it wasn't your fault or the, the problem, you know, is, is something with the actual equipment, you should expect that that gets fixed. Now, what it's going to take to get that, that uh, to that point I don't know, I guess everybody's experience would be uh, unique and individual, uh, but I understand that they do better than the yellow machine, which is cheaper, which all that makes sense, right? So it's just it's simple economics. So that being said, we're gonna get this thing out of the box. I'm gonna show you, like here it is. This is how it showed up, it's beautiful. Uh, it came UPS, UPS ground. Uh, there's hardly a, a squish or a ding on it, which is very impressive. For, uh... All right, we got a box in the box. Got a box in the box. And 
Okay, so machine, box, box. Look at this, they got a, a torch that already has a cover on it. That's kind of fancy. All right. So yeah, it's a, a super flex cable and it has a, a, like a denim cover on it. It's got a torch switch and a foot pedal. Be interesting to see how that hooks up. And we got a torch kit. So it's just a normal number 17 large uh, torch and comes with a uh, call it a couple cups, a five, a six, a seven. It looks like it's a one eighth inch call it, although it's got different size holders, I'm not sure if that would work, if you could use all three of those sizes, because it looks like it comes with uh, like a 1 16th, a 3 32nd, and a 1 8th, but the collet itself looks like a 1 8th collet, which I'll have to see if that works. But this stuff here is perfectly fine for uh, welding aluminum. People always ask what should we use for aluminum, because they think you have to have some kind of special uh, big cup like you do for make your stainless look nice. And uh, that's not true. You, you can use this number number five right here with this this setup right here to do aluminum, and that's what a lot of people are interested in on these kind of machines. Did forget to say that this is that's one of my prerequisites for machines is they need to be DC. They need to have like 180 amps, uh, 200 preferable, and they need to have both DC, which is um, for welding uh, all your stills in titanium uh, and then it needs to have AC for welding and aluminum uh, and it needs to have a high frequency start that's where you just push the pedal and it, it starts by itself you don't have to touch the tungsten or scratch start it or any of that stuff it's that's too painful uh, for beginners to learn so that's what this machine has is 200 amps uh, DC I think it's got some other cool stuff we got a nice hose uh, flexible guy it's kind of nice I'm betting that this would be the regulator then. Yeah, it's even got a nice uh, flow regulator, a little ball, ball flow guy. So that's nice. Uh, foot pedal, it's a nice foot pedal too. Look at this. This isn't that like uh, AHP has got this funky little gray thing. I think you can step it up if you want to. Uh, I definitely would because I hated that little pedal when I used this th that thing. Um, but this is this is a lot like the one I have for my HTP. Uh, also like the one that comes on the ProTig from Harbor Freight. But they quit making that. I guess they got in a dispute with Lincoln. <laughs> and they decided it was in their best interest to quit making them. So a stinger if, you, if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not. We got a plug. Oh, this is an adapter. So... I didn't check. I'm, I'm gonna have to check to see if this thing is uh, is 110, 220. That that'd be kind of nice. Uh, but we do have an a, adapter for 110, so I'm assuming it is. It already has the plug on it for the for the uh, 220, which is nice. You don't have to wire it in. And then we have our ground strap, and uh, yeah, pretty typical ground strap. I like to swap these out for go to the weld store, get a nice copper, all copper one and uh, just swap it out for that and then you're then you're golden uh, but you know is it got copper contacts and copper wire so it probably probably is pretty decent so those are all of our parts everything we need to get started minus a mask gloves tungsten argon and metal and filler wire so pretty good pretty good little kit there you know if you want to get yourself everything you need to get started you go on a monkey fab you go on to uh, monkeyfabgarage.com 
and go under TIG starter sets and you can get a starter set that's got all the tungstens and the fancy cups and gas lenses and all that stuff. Then all you need is a helmet and some gloves. One thing about helmets, some guy recently contacted me and he was getting flashed, flashed by his uh, helmet. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? And uh, some helmets just, they're, they're not, they can't pick the TIG arc up. It's, uh, it's not intense, I guess, enough for it. I'm sure there's some technical term or word or whatever, but um, I noticed that when I first started rowing, I had a little Lincoln mask that I bought from Home Depot that worked great with my MIG welder, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't see the arc on the uh, TIG. So always make sure you get yourself a, a good helmet and you only have one set of eyes. So might as well take care of those. It's probably like, it's probably like 40 pounds. Feels like about 40 pounds. Of course I'm out of shape, so maybe, maybe it's less. Okay, check this bad boy out, right? Right. Okay, so got a gas. It's a quick disconnect too, that's kind of neat. So we got a gas and uh, then we have a plus and a minus. This is where people always mess up with Everlast. It's, it's your welding in DC electrode negative. So that means your torch goes to the minus. It's not the ground. It's not the ground. And that your uh, ground goes to the positive, which is a really bit, a bit odd. But uh, that's the way it works. I'll even show you. This happens to everybody with the Everlast. Yo, know, Mike, my machine isn't working. The aluminum is welding like crap. What the hell? Oh, see, would I lie to you? You can see the ground strappy of a mill. Sorry about pointing with my middle finger there, but that's, that's what reaches to the positive. And then your torch to the negative. So be sure not to mess that up. And we also got our control. This is like a nice little panel. I'd probably break it within a week or so. But look at all the features we got. We got, uh, 2T, 4T, I'm not sure how to change the 2T to the 4T. Maybe, oh, it's a button, okay. Well, yeah, and we got down slope. So that tells your torch when you let off the, the, the pedal how long to slope down. I just leave it at zero and just do it with my foot. Um, you got your pre-flow, which I always just kind of leave at zero. And uh, your, or you can just tap it just a tad if that's not working out for you. Um, but I usually tap my torch to get it going before I start going, uh, just to make sure we clear out any oxygen that might be in the line. They got post flow. So this is a big sticking point for a lot of homies on uh, the Vulcan was it was a set post flow and people was like, it's too much. I do all stainless, so it wasn't enough. I have to tap it one more time. But uh, here you got zero seconds all the way up to 25 seconds. So uh, that's ridiculous. Of course, me being ridiculous, I'd probably sit at 12 anyway and just kind of leave it there. Um, across the top, we got high low, so that's our pulse button, uh, our remote. Um, that's going to tell us whether or not we're using the, the hand the hand switch or the foot pedal. Uh, 2T would be the pedal, and 4T would be the hand switch. Um, AC toggle it between AC and DC welding. Bob's visiting us. <laughs> And our mode, we got lift start, uh, lift start TIG, and stick, or high frequency, I'm sorry, it's the first one. I'm gonna have my glasses, you have to forgive me. So we got high frequency, lift start, and stick. So we'll just always leave that on high frequency and we won't have to worry about it. Across the bottom, we have our pulse frequency. So that's how many uh, pulses per second it's doing. It can go like one to 150. We have our pulse amp, so that's gonna be a percentage of the, the amps that you're at. So you could set it to like 50, and it'll be like half. So it'll pulse to the full, and then it'll go down. So if you had it 100, it'll pulse to 100. If you put up one second, one pulse, or yeah, one pulse per second. Um, and then hit it, we'll have like 
uh, one pulse will go to 100 and then for a half of that or that, that second it goes down to 50 and then back up to 100 like that and then we have pulse time on so that's kind of interesting so that that tells you how much of that peak time you want it to be at peak time so you can adjust that from 50 so like half as well uh, of that peak time to uh, more maybe you want more of the DC putting in or the or the, the higher amps putting in uh, with less off time uh, so that's kind of a neat feature the stick we won't worry about that the AC so we have uh, our frequency it is super low to 20 all the way up to 250 which is ridiculous um, pretty much right in the middle would be good 135 it says and then we have our balance from 20 to 80 so We'll have to figure that out. I think that the Everlafts are backwards. So whereas my HTP will usually run at 70, I think this one runs on 30. Um, but we'll have to fiddle with that to figure it out. And then you just got up here is probably your amp adjustments. And I like that, having that kind of separate of all the other little buttons and stuff. I like this analog set out a lot. So, um, so it's not gonna be like a long-term uh, torture chest where I, I, I lean on this thing for months like I did the uh, Harbor Freight Machine. Uh, it's just gonna be, we're just gonna run some different uh, materials, some different joints, and mess around with it a little bit, mess with the pulse, uh, see you know, how we like it, and uh, give you guys a thumbs up and thumbs down, and that way you can know if you're in the market for one of these guys, uh, if you'll like it or not. So that will be the Everlast PowerTig 200 DV uh, review. We'll follow this one up by setting it all up, plugging it all in, and probably start welding some stuff out in the next episode. So be sure to follow along on this guy. Uh, we're gonna be raffling this off. I'll, like I said, I'll hang a, a deal uh, probably in the next video or, or two about how exactly the raffle is going to work and then all the proceeds from that will be given away to charity and uh we'll have done good for everybody hopefully so i hope you dig it i hope you're excited for this i am and until next time this is mike Monkey fab signing out